Good morning to everybody. Uh, this is my presentation. You can see the, the title. Learn evidences experimenting with hydrogen and deuterium loading in thin palladium films. I started to work on this experiment I will present you uh, about uh, two years ago when uh, Mizuno published the first results with the reactor, if I am correct, R19. Uh, so I, I uh, couldn't work continuously on this uh, experiments because I have uh, uh, nine uh, grandchildren. So, uh, in, uh, while I am in, uh, retired from <laughs> my company, my ex-company, I need to take care of uh, grandchildren. Uh, so, this is the outline of my presentation. Previous finding uh, reference, setup overview. <clears throat> Palladium electroplated nickel sample, loading monitoring, neutrons and heat, final conclusions. Okay, here there is um, the web address of uh, uh, the site of uh, Argal organization, Argal uh, uh, research organization, and you can see I put uh, in the website uh, three files recently just to uh, complete the, what I am presenting now because uh, the presentation in this uh, contest is very, is very short. It's just a summary of what I did in these two years of work. So you can uh, take a look to uh, previous work, uh, going to the, the, what is indicated by the arrows in this uh, Argal page. Okay, it's possible to see, okay. Uh, this is the setup overview of my, uh, of one of the, my uh, reactors I have in the, in the lab. Uh, the, the reactor is a stainless steel uh, chamber with uh, uh, a volume of uh, 320 cc and I have in the lab a continuous monitoring of uh, gamma emission making a uh, uh, gamma spectrum each uh, hour uh, and uh, I have also uh, neutron monitoring continuously working in the, in the lab uh, right now is uh, in, in function. Uh, there is some uh, interface to uh, collect data in a computer with a lab view program. And uh, on the back is not uh, visible uh, very well. There is a uh, hydrogen generator, is an electrolyzer for very pure hydrogen gas. Okay, what is important in this experiment, uh, I realized uh, just during the experiment itself, uh, the pressure monitoring, be because uh, uh, something happened that was unexpected uh, when I prepared the experiment. So I have uh, Edward's uh, uh, sensor for the temperature and uh, the interface to the computer and this is the display monitor. This is the sketch of uh, the reactor when I, uh, where I put inside uh, the material to test. Uh, in all my tests, I have um, a palladium resistor, a thin film palladium resistor, just to verify that the atmosphere inside the reactor is the correct one. And uh, this resistor is uh, uh, 5 ohm uh, resistance, is a thin film, uh, and is important because I, I can uh, 
uh, verify the dynamics of the absorption of the hydrogen or deuterium inside the palladium. Uh, below, inside the reactor, there is also a heater, is a one ohm heater, uh, is a resistor, and uh, there is a, a, a dielectric plate to separate the material from the resistor, from the heater, and uh, on top of this uh, uh, ceramic uh, uh, insulator, I put the material to test. This is the, the, some picture about the, the first experiment done about two years ago when I, was, I, I knew the, the work done by Mizuno with the, uh, nickel and palladium uh, uh, coverage. Uh, I was suggested in some paper of Mizuno that you can put palladium on nickel also electroplating uh, the material. And so in, uh, in my lab I was able to make uh, uh, this kind of deposition because I did in, in the past experiments on uh, co-deposition on uh, palladium of uh, nano, uh, nano palladium to see alpha particles. And so I used the same uh, uh, chemical solution to make uh, electroplating of uh, uh, nickel form uh, of small dimensions. The first uh, experiment was on uh, about two square centimeter, uh, two square centimeter sample. And in that uh, experiments, I just uh, was able to find neutrons emission, not uh, heat, uh, was produced by that experiment, also using hydrogen or deuterium. Uh, then, uh, recently, I repeated the experiment, putting inside the reactor um, uh, um, higher quantity of material, about uh, 0.5 grams of uh, nickel uh, form. This is the, in the center of the, the screen, you can see the, the sample. The diameter is about four centimeter, and the, the weight was very low. Uh, on the right side of uh, uh, the, the slide, you can see two curves. The black one is the pressure inside the reactor from uh, zero to uh, about uh, one bar, 950 millibar. Uh, the red line is the resistance of the, the monitoring uh, resistor. That goes from uh, five ohms about to 7.5, uh, something like that, with the hydrogen. Uh, on the left side of the screen, you can see the behavior of the pressure in the, in the chamber. The red line is the, is the, the, the temperature inside, uh, sorry, is the value of the resistance of palladium, it's stable because it uh, reaches the equilibrium with hydrogen very, very quickly. And uh, in few minutes, two or three minutes, reaches the, the saturation value. And uh, uh, the, the graph, the x-axis, uh, shows the time. It's not uh, viewable uh, so, so well, but uh, the white line is the pressure inside the reactor. And uh, the, this decrease of the pressure uh, lasted three days. Was the first loading of the hydrogen into the chamber. And I was surprised to see after um, half an hour, one hour, a small decrease of the pressure. So I let the, the uh, the reactor stay there, 
and uh, I waited, and I saw in the next days that the, the pressure was uh, decreasing uh, slowly. And, uh, okay, you can see some irregularity in the, 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 the decrease of the pressure due to the environment temperature. When the environment temperature is moving, uh, during the night is cooler, <laughs> and uh, you can see some variation in the pressure. Okay. Uh, so, I, after this absorption of about uh, 80 millibar of uh, decrease of the pressure, I was uh, stressing the, the, the material, heating and making vacuum inside the reactor to see uh, what, uh, if the mechanism will be repeated in the next uh, uh, filling of the reactor. And this is one of the, filling, uh, the sub subsequent uh, filling of the reactor. And you can see, in this case, the x-axis is uh, uh, each, uh, each line, each square, is uh, half an hour, is half an hour. So the decrease of the pressure was uh, more rapid than in the first loading. And you can see on the uh, right of uh, the, the slide the, the variation of the temperature of the sample. On the sample, there is a small uh, sensor for the temperature. Very, it's a very small PT100 sensor. And you can see that <coughs> sorry, the temperature of the sample increased during the, the, decrease, the rapid decrease of the pressure. And the, 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 um, uh, the increase of the temperature was of about one, two degrees. No, no, no such, uh, not a big amount. And uh, after that, I made again a vacuum in the reactor. I heated the sample to absorb the hydrogen. And then I filled it again the reactor with hydrogen, and I saw that the, the mechanism repeated again after two, about two hours uh, uh, after the filling. After two hours, we had a quite rapid uh, absorption, and again, the chemical increase of the temperature was uh, clearly visible in the uh, in, in the uh, uh, computer. Okay, uh, the, the amount of uh, uh, absorption calculated by uh, calculating the volume of uh, hydrogen absorbed uh, was quite uh, interesting just after the, the, the first absorption phase. And uh, the total amount was 58 uh, uh, centimet cubic centimeter. And the ratio between uh, hydrogen and nickel was 0 0.6, 0 0.6, quite uh, new at environment temperature. Was not, I was aware that in the previous experiment, I stressed the nickel in hydrogen without palladium and I had uh, absorption only over 150 degrees, but uh, uh, not so big absorption, very uh, uh, smaller. Okay. Uh, and uh, during uh, some uh, period of uh, uh, hydrogen in the reactor and uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, material, uh, making sub uh, subsequent filling, uh, I observed during a steady state of uh, the reactor some uh, neutron emission in hydrogen. Neutron emission, normally I, uh, very f I had m many times this kind of emission, but in form of burst, not very prolonged emission of uh, 
uh, neutron, uh, even if a very small over the background uh, emission was observed in the first experiment with the palladium, uh, palladium only or palladium over nickel. Uh, the overall amount of hydrogen absorbed uh, making uh, subsequent filling uh, after the absorption was such to have a total absorption of uh, 112 cubic centimeter of hydrogen. The value, the ratio between hydrogen and uh, nickel is calculated as 1.18. Okay, this is the, the graph, the monitoring of the neutrons. The green dots are uh, relative to the uh, upper x-axis means uh, neutrons per hour. And you see that in the, the, the hour 11, I had 70 neutrons in the, the, that hour. Seven, uh, 17, 17 neutrons. And uh, it means that that point is uh, really out of uh, the background distribution of the neutrons detected that we can observe here. This is the histogram of uh, neutrons per hour compared with the background in the, the dotted line. And we have the point with a burst of uh, neutrons, not so big, by the way, and uh, 11, uh, 17 neutrons in one hour. It is very far from the uh, normal distribution of uh, the, the monitoring. The, the background is... Uh, is coming from uh, uh, a lot of uh, acquisitions, a thousand acquisitions, even more. And heat excess after D2 loading. This was quite unexpected, <laughs> like uh, the, the abnormal absorption of the nickel. And uh, um, as, at a certain point, I stopped to uh, use hydrogen inside the reactor and uh, try to put deuterium. And uh, you can see uh, the loading of deuterium, you can uh, follow the uh, loading of uh, the monitor, uh, monitoring resistor is the uh, white line in the left of the slide that is, uh, uh, is not the resistance, but is the power dissipated on the resistor. So you, when the resistance increases, the power decreases. And you can see that uh, at the end of the absorption of the monitor resistor, I had uh, uh, the red line is the temperature of the sample. I had an increase, a small increase of the temperature of the sample just at, uh, when the, the monitor resistor saturated. And um, you can see that the first jump of temperature was only a few degrees, five, seven, seven ten, 10 degrees. But after that, uh, the degree is uh, uh, five minutes each line. It, the, the, the grid of the x-axis is uh, uh, five minutes. So uh, we had for uh, 20 minutes, the temperature of the sample went up and down and uh, reached the maximum value of uh, 130 degrees without any energy inside the reactor, inside the, the sample. So, uh, the dynamic of deuterium absorption is indicated by the white line in the graph. When the absorption reaches about stability, I had this maximum temperature increase. This was unexpected, and I supposed that there was something wrong in the reactor, <laughs> because maybe that 
the connection of the PT100 uh, measuring the temperature on the, was not uh, stable. Uh, and this effect, I took a picture, this is a picture from my phone, uh, I took a picture just to memorize this event, but I uh, wanted to wait to make conclusions uh, when I will be able to extract the, the material from the reactor. And so, uh, uh, okay. The thermal anomaly uh, begins, as you, we saw, in coincidence with the, the end of the T2 absor D2 absorption in the palladium. The thermal anomaly, if true, uh, must be attributed to an exothermic reaction in the palladium or at the interface of, uh, with nickel. Given that the continuation of the experiment for days did not show any absorption of deuterium in the nickel. That is quite strange. Differently from hydrogen, no absorption of deuterium into the nickel. Uh, during the thermal anomaly, gamma and neutron recording remained to, at the background level. No. This is the uh, thermal uh, model of uh, the, the, the reactor. So it is quite easy to measure the thermal resistance uh, between uh, the material to the, the chamber, uh, from the chamber to the environment. So we could calculate the maximum power uh, produced during the, the high jump of temperature. Uh, this re uh, thermal resistance are measured at a steady state of the reactor. So it's quite easy to, uh, the value R1 plus uh, R2 is 14 uh, degrees per watt. And so the maximum power produced in the, in the, uh, in the sample was 7.1 watts minimum because you need to take care of the, the, the charge of uh, thermal capacitance. Unfortunately, the, the, the thermal capacitance to the environment and the thermal resistance uh, to the environment are uh, determine the, the, the uh, time of stability of the chamber of five hours. So while the, the, uh, the increase of the temperature of the sample, if you have power, takes uh, minutes. So uh, I will analyze the raw data of the, the that are stored in, uh, in our disk uh, to see if the, also the chamber had uh, an increase, a small increase of temperature, but uh, I didn't have time to do the, that. So, um, uh, after the, this event, I, was, I suspended my judgment to, <laughs> to wait to, to extract out the material uh, to verify the condition of the uh, thermal sensor. I did that uh, after uh, weeks and I confirmed that everything inside the, the reactor was stable. So the connection of the PT100 to the, the measurement tool was correct, was stable. And uh, also, uh, continuing the experiment the thermal uh, sensor didn't give me any problem. So it was working uh, as usual. Uh, after uh, getting out of the deuterium, I was able to put hydrogen again inside before uh, getting out of the material. And uh, there was, uh, I had again cycles with uh, good absorption, but Cycle after cycle, this absorption uh, uh, disappeared. And uh, when I took a look to, at the microscope, optical microscope, to the sample, I saw 
the lamination of uh, palladium deposited on the, on the nickel. So there is no uh, any more absorption at environment temperature. Uh, okay, I tested also titanium uh, to do this uh, kind of test, but uh, I had absorption only over 150 degrees. I get uh, uh, form, uh, uh, titanium form is different from nickel form, it's much heavier in the weight, the weight is higher. And I had a moderate absorption only on uh, over 150 degrees. Conclusions. Uh, okay, the unexpected ability to absorb a hydrogen at room temperature by a sample of nickel on the surface of which a thin layer of palladium was deposited could be exploited to activate LENR anomalies. In this specific, in one experiment, the volume of H2 absorbed by 0.5 grams of nickel was about 112 uh, cubic centimeter, such as to bring the ratio between hydrogen and nickel atoms to a value around 1.18 higher than the threshold considered for the activation of the LENR anomalies in the palladium. As for the other experiments, in neutron emission burst is associated to hydrogen and deuterium metal loading. Even though D2 did not show absorption in the nickel, a clear episode, episode of excess heat generated occurred at room temperature of which the activation mechanism remains still undetermined. This is the next, the next possibility we have to make a real replication of uh, Mizuno experiments with my friends in the Argal Association. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for, for, for your work. Uh, did you use um, about uh, deuterium cycles, uh, some cycles uh, with uh, only uh, hydrogen before, or you change your samples and uh, using, uh, you made uh, full cycles uh, only with uh, deuterium. Sorry, I, I lost the first part of your uh, question. Could you yes, uh, your first test, your first test uh, are made with, uh, only with uh, hydrogen cycles. Then you made the same with uh, deuterium cycles. About deuterium cycles. Ah, okay. So, sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> About your first, first uh, cycles by uh, hydrogen, uh, you, di you do not have uh, any excess heat, I understood. Then you tried to make the same with deuterium we, uh, by several cycles to load the deuterium. But in this case, uh, did you make the first cycles with hydrogen? Then you, you add some cycles uh, with uh, deuterium to have had some excess heat. I, I really don't un understood your question. Uh, let's see if I say. You, you were asking. If I'm right, so you, Doc, start, can you, explain? you started first with hydrogen and you didn't get any excess heat. Yes. And then you heated up to deload the hydrogen. Yes. To what temperature, first question. And then you loaded with deuterium. Yes. And then you got this excess heat. Exactly. Yes. Okay. That is, that's all. Okay. Is that satisfactory? But, uh, what is different from hydrogen and uh, deuterium? With hydrogen, no excess heat. With deuterium, excess heat, but no absorption. <laughs> okay. The, we, uh, the absorption was only in the palladium. I had the monitor of the absorption of deuterium into the palladium. Maybe that, that all the, the tests I did prepared uh, the, the interface between palladium and nickel 
in a proper way to make something activating the reaction. Because, uh, as you could see, uh, we had a very different absorption from the first loading to the subsequent loadings. So the, the interface changed during this uh, during this many experiments. Okay, one, one last question of this talk, please. Last question. Le one more question. Yours. Okay, uh, this is very much probably linked with what you are discussing Voice, now. Voice, please. Uh, very much linked with what you are discussing now. In your conclusion page, uh, there is an expression: the unexpected. Uh, absorption of hydrogen by nickel. Yeah. Yes, uh, it normally means that uh, quite um, strong conditions are required normally, uh, like high temperature and high pressure for nickel absorption. Yeah. And you are now explaining why nickel uh, is absorbing uh, hydrogen at room temperature in your case. Maybe you can explain once again <laughs> why <laughs> and how you calculate this amount of absorbed uh, hydrogen. This is my well, second question. I, I can uh, tell you my opinion about what uh, happened. You have the, the, the uh, palladium absorbing hydrogen and at interface there is a situation like able to uh, pump hydrogen from the palladium to nickel. And uh, this is due to what potentials, different uh, potentials, uh, chemical potentials, I don't know exactly, but uh, is clearly uh, some mechanism happening at the interface of, from palladium to nickel. Uh, very yeah, simple. We, we, uh, I, let me ask you to talk privately uh, because there are a lot of details. I your, your questions are good. You, you want to respond now? Yes, I measured the, the, the quantity of uh, hydrogen disappeared from the, 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 into the chamber because the, the pressure decreased a lot. I measured the quantity of hydrogen and then I calculated the, the ratio between uh, hydrogen and nickel atoms.